Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Melissa, and I'm here to lead you through All Levels Yoga. We will practice together for 45 minutes today. As we go through class, just a reminder to listen to your body. If any of the stretches that we are working with don't work for your body, please skip them, come on out and modify. For your practice today, you'll want to have a mat, so something comfortable to practice on. And I took out the blanket and the yoga block. So if you'd like to have those, you can definitely have those for your practice, but they are not a necessity for the practice. They just will help in some of the stretches and poses. And we will be doing a variety of standing, seated, and stretches down on the back. So of course, adjust your monitor if needed. And as we go through our class today, I was thinking about doing a bit of a spring inspired practice. Tomorrow we have our spring equinox in the Northern Hemisphere. And spring really represents this time of renewal and rebirth, transformation. So it can be a nice opportunity to release, to let go of things that aren't serving you anymore. Maybe that's a negative habit, a way of being, a way of thinking, and then just really opening yourself up to this new season. And a lot of times when we look to yoga, detox practice shows up when we talk about the spring. So we'll do a little bit of a detox flow today. We'll incorporate different twists into the practice, which can be really good for aligning the mind and aligning the body. So let's get started in a comfortable seated position. I enjoy sitting on the block. That just helps sitting down be a little bit more comfortable. If you do have the blocks here, so our blocks typically have three heights, lowest, medium, and high. So you can always find out the variation that works the best for you. And I enjoy sitting on the block because it helps to keep my spine a little straighter. Sometimes when I sit down on the ground, I find that it's very easy for my back to round. So this just helps to elongate the spine, find a bit more space in the front body. Also, it helps to relax your hips and knees. If I was sitting without the block, my knees might be a bit higher. So it allows for the knees to drop down, the hips to roll forward a little bit, just to give yourself a bit more space. So we're going to start here with a little centering. Let's take a moment to close the eyes or soften the gaze. And we'll begin with a few rolls of the shoulders. So we're just going to take our shoulders up to the ears. We'll create a nice large circle. Shoulders can relax on the exhale. Take a nice full breath in, draw the shoulders up, back and down. And then let's go one more time here. Nice full breath in and full breath out. And now as you relax your shoulders from the ears, we'll just pause in stillness. Take a moment to connect with your inhale and your exhale. Try to be mindful of breathing in and breathing out through your nose. So through our yoga practice today, we'll try to avoid mouth breathing. So we'll inhale through our nose and we will exhale through our nose. And then as we build on that breathing technique, let's try to breathe very deeply. So we'll work for those full, deep diaphragmatic breaths. Try to breathe into your stomach. Feel your navel rise as you inhale. And feel your navel fall as you exhale. Feel your ribs expanding as you breathe in. And then contracting as you breathe out. And then feel your chest rise on your in-breath. And then fall on the out-breath. And then as we go through our class, trying to let the breath be the focal point. If the mind gets active, come back to the breath. If the posture feels challenging, come back to the breath. Feel free to set an intention if you'd like. And an intention could be anything, maybe to relax, maybe to just connect to yourself. Give yourself this next 45 minutes to just do something so nourishing for your mind and for your body. Let's 
take a moment to gently draw the right hand down to the mat. We'll begin to sweep the left hand up and over, finding a side stretch. Try to plug your left sitting bone down into the ground and see if you can find a length through the whole left side of your body. So through the arm and through your fingertips. Coming back to center, left hand plants, right hand lifts. Let's try that on the other side. And what you might feel is the shoulder creeping to the ear. So see if you can plug your shoulder blade down your back, plug the shoulder down. And we'll just breathe here. So just nice opening for the side body and nice stretch for our spine. Let's bring ourselves back on up. We'll take a nice full breath here. Let's take a gentle fold forward on exhale. So we'll just walk those hands out in front, give a little dive down. Just breathe here, nice opportunity to open up the low back a bit. With your exhale, just try to melt away tension that you might be holding onto here. Walking your hands into your body. Let's come into a tabletop position. And as you come to table, feel free to grab a blanket if you would like to pad your knees. So we're gonna take our knees, our hips in line. We'll bring our wrists, our shoulders in line and feel the fingers got out nice and wide here. I'm gonna take some time to move lateral, laterally here. So you might be off the yoga mat a little bit, but let's take our right knee and we're gonna find our way into a stretch called fire hydrants. We'll work on circling our right knee. And the most common thing here is to really shift the weight into your left hand. So let's try, try to put weight in the right hand, try to get balanced here in your low back and balanced here in your hips. And reverse, we're gonna flow in the other direction. And then maybe imagine you could balance a block on your low back. We are going to kick the right foot to the right. We're going to lower our foot down, so it's off to the side, and then that's coming up. So we call this one gate pose parigasana. I'm going to take an inhale here, hands to the sky. Exhale, hands to the heart. Full breath in. Let's reach and stretch up. Let it go. And let's go three more times here. So we'll just take this opportunity to open up the shoulders. We've all been probably sitting a lot through the day today, not having the best posture. So... Really nice opportunity to warm up the shoulders, get those arms, fingers moving. When that feels complete, let's float our right hand to our right hip, left hand up and over. We're trying out that lateral stretch for the spine a second time. So maybe you can feel that the body feels a little more open here, maybe a little easier. Maybe you can stretch a little deeper and further. Core engages. Let's take that left hand down, right hand's gonna lift up. And we'll pause here. So this brings us into a variation of side plank. We also call this one Bashi Sasana in Sanskrit. Feel free to keep your foot on the ground. You may want to lift your leg up for a little more challenge. And full expression would be right hand for the right foot. We call this a knee down sugar cane stretch. And we want to begin to kick the foot into the hand. So find a bit of a back bend here. Try to open your heart space, open the shoulders. And releasing the foot down. Core engages to come on up. Hands at the top of your mat. Right foot will sweep to the left and we're going to come to a C curve for the spine. Feel free to walk your hands off towards the left. Maybe gaze off your left shoulder. And just see if that helps you get a little bit more stretch in your spine. Let's begin to reset. We're going to land back in table. And then as you ground into your right knee, let's float that left leg up to our fire hydrant stretch. And then we're going to take that to our circles. So if there are moments of intensity in this stretch, I know we don't always move this way, make sure that you are breathing. So we're gonna come back to that inhale and exhale through the nose. 
And then reverse, let's flow in the other direction. And then we are gonna kick our left foot to the left, gorilla kick, float it down. Core engages, coming on up. Let's take a full breath here. Hands reach up, hands to the heart. We'll circle in the other direction to warm the shoulders up the opposite way. Fingertips come up, arms out and around. Let's go four more times here. So as you release those hands, see if you can open the chest and heart. Not necessarily a big back bend, but just a little bit of a arcing of the spine, opening the chest and the heart, broadening through the collarbone. Left hand, left hip, right hand up and over. And then trying to take that full breath here. So we have all of these little muscles in between the ribs. So let's give them a nice breath here to give them a stretch. Come back to center, right hand lowers, left hand lifts. And option to find the one that works for you. So foot down, leg can lift. And then option for hand for the foot. And breathe. If you are taking that variation of hand for foot, see if you can kick your foot into your hand. And that's going to give you a little bit more of a back bend through the three parts of your back. Foot comes down, core engages, come on up. Hands at the top of your mat. Left foot to the right. Let's come to C curve here. And then we can walk our hands to the right and we can gaze off the right shoulder. And back to neutral, resetting to tabletop position. From here, let's do a little strengthening of our shoulders. So we'll come down into our elbows. We're gonna work with dolphin. So we'll be down on our elbows, reach for opposite arms. Hands come out in front. So either fingers will interlock and palms will touch, or you can press your hands down into the mat. Toes will curl under, hips to the sky. And find our way into dolphin. Maybe you walk your feet towards your face a little bit. See if you can really draw the sitting bones to the sky. So we wanna find length through the backs of our legs, length through our spine. Try to let your head hang heavy here like a weight. And then feeling that really strong connection through the forearms. So we're gonna lift through the shoulders, length and space here. So if this feels uh, good for you and you wanna come out, let's come to child's pose. So that's where your knees will lower and then hips will go to the heels. If you'd like to invite some more challenge, maybe lift your right leg up, coming into a three, Limbed dolphin stretch. We're going to lower that right foot down, left leg lifts up when you're ready. And then really trying to create the same sensation of drawing your stomach towards the right thigh. We're going to lower, foot down, knees are going to lower. Let's take hips to heels. We'll soften to a child's pose for a moment. So as you're in child's pose, either the knees are together, it's gonna help to open up your low back. You can also take your big toes to touch, maybe knees away from one another to give yourself that leg stretch and hip stretch. Let's take a full breath here on your exhale, lifting to down dog. Toes curl under, hips lift up. And let's shake it out a little bit here. Bend one knee and bend the other knee. Maybe relax your head yes and relax your head no. I'm just getting really grounded in the hands, feel the groundedness in the feet. Let's come into plank from here. We'll try for a high push-up pose. Knees can be up or down as you take plank, whichever you prefer. We'll come into a reverse push of down, lowering chaturanga. Let's come to an up dog. We'll open the chest and the heart. 
Let's see if we can breathe into that nice low back bend. And then pressing to down dog when you're ready. Toes curl under, hips to the sky. Toes to the hands. Let's bring it forward into a fold. And then as you take your fold, maybe shake out the legs here. Bend one knee, bend the other. Head relaxes yes, and head relaxes no. Finding stillness, hands to the shins. Let's lift the spine and lengthen the spine. We're gonna come on down, grounding into your feet, core engages. Let's take it up to standing, full breath in, and then drawing your hands to your heart as you exhale. Let's work with a dancer pose. We'll come into a pose called Nadar Jasana. For this one, we'll take our right hand for our right foot. So you're just going to reach back for your foot here. And if that feels very challenging, maybe what you'll do is just bend the knee and just work the foot in towards the body. I know it's not always the easiest to grab onto the foot. If everything feels okay here, left hand can come up, maybe take index and thumb to touch her mudra, chin mudra, yana mudra. And then we'll begin to dive forward a little bit and begin to kick the foot into the hand. So you wanna feel that foot kicking back and up. And anytime we balance, we want to find a drishti. So we wanna find that one spot to focus your concentration and to focus your awareness. And once you find that spot, not letting the eye shift at all. From here, let's come into a crescent warrior. So we'll take our right foot back. The right heel will be lifted. And we're gonna feel that heel pressing straight back. So we also call this one a high lunge pose. Really activate your right leg and imagine that you could draw this line from your right heel to your right hip. So pressing out through your heel and pressing out through the back of your knee. Let's begin to come forward. We're gonna try for a standing pigeon stretch. So for this one, what we'll do is we'll spring off of our right foot. We're gonna kick that right leg up over, crossing that leg, and then dropping the hips back and down. So a little bit like a chair pose, a little bit like a pigeon pose. Let's see if we can bring our weight back into our heels. We're gonna feel the toes of that left foot being really light. And then almost feeling like those toes could lift from the ground a little bit. From here, we're gonna release to a warrior one pose. A little different from that crescent because our right heel will be grounded. And we're going to press firmly into that right heel. So we're gonna get into the outer edge of our right foot. We wanna breathe into that calf and that hamstring stretch. Let's try a yoga mudra heart opener here. Fingers will interlock. We're gonna take those palms to touch, lengthening your spine, diving down as you exhale. And then try to relax the fronts of the shoulders. I'm just noticing if that helps you move a little deeper into the shoulder stretch. Ground into your feet, core engages. Let's bring ourselves back on up, hands to the sky. Hands are gonna come down. Let's come to runner's lunge. Right foot to left, forward fold. Halfway lift. Forward fold, rising up on inhale, ground into the feet, lifting hands to the sky, hands at the heart, exhale. Dancer on the other side. Let's take our left hand for our left foot. Right hand reaches up for our mudra and begins to kick the foot into the hand. We're gonna breathe here. Maybe imagining that you could grow roots from the bottom of your right foot right down into the mat. So try to get grounded evenly in the inside and the outside of each foot. Let's begin to release back. We're gonna land in our crescent warrior, the high lunge warrior. 
Feeling the core work here. So let's tuck our tailbone and we're going to feel our navel move back and up towards the spine slightly. Springing off your left foot, let's come to standing pigeon. Left leg comes up and over. Drop the hips back and down. So this is such a wonderful stretch for your legs, hips, so good for the low back. To get a little more stretch, maybe flex your left foot. And then this left knee, either pressing it down or just energetically sending that down. Releasing, we're gonna land in warrior one, left foot back, left heel lowers, find in that deep bend in the front knee. Let's see if we can relax our shoulders from our ears, hands behind the body. Fingers interlock, palms touch, lengthen, fold it down on exhale. And then as you're folding here, just noticing where are you holding on to tension and then letting that tension go as you exhale. Grounding into your feet, let's take our hands back on up, reset to warrior one. Hands come down, let's take runner's lunge and then right hand lifts, taking a runner's twist. Now, as you're twisting on the in breath, let's see if we can lengthen our spine a bit more. Let the twist deepen a bit more here as well. Right hand lowers, let's take left foot to meet right, forward, fold. Right foot floats back, runner's lunge. Left hand lifts this time. Let's twist it out. Runners twist. Now, as we're twisting here, left shoulder, see if you can roll it back a little bit. Right shoulder draws under. Almost like you could shine your heart right on up to the sky. Left hand will plant. Let's take our right foot to meet our left. We're going to come back to a fold. Left foot steps back this time. Runners lunge. Straighten your front leg. So we're going to have both of our legs straight and we're going to have our left heel lifted. So have that left heel active, the back leg active. Right hand lifts. We're going to try for a straight leg twist. So this is similar to our runner's twist, but we're just working with our straight legs. See if you can gently draw your right hip crease back and then maybe that left hip draws forward slightly. Let's reset back to runner's lunge, forward fold, right foot floats back, runner's lunge. Exhale, both of the legs straight in. Take an inhale here, exhale, left hand lifts, twist, straight leg twist. And then maybe just be aware, notice if you feel the difference or the similarities between this and runner's twist. It is a little different because of the back leg and the front leg as well. A little different too from that pyramid twist. And we're gonna release. Let's take it to runner's lunge from here, back through to plank, high push up pose. Knees can be up or down, depending on that arm and shoulder strength. Let's lower chaturanga. We'll float into up dog. Breathe into your mid back bend here and then press it back. Let's take it to down dog on exhale. Really grounding into the hands, sitting bones reaching and stretching to the sky. So let's come on out for just a moment. I just wanted to chat about our side plank stretch. So feel free to come down onto the knees if that works for you. So I'd love to work with side plank. We started with that, we warmed up with it. There's many ways to do it. And I just wanted to show them because I know sometimes we don't have the shoulder strength or we've been working with our hands all day so it doesn't feel so great on the wrists. So there's lots of ways to modify this one. So side plank can be done by lowering the bottom leg and then kicking out that top leg. So this is a nice option. We tried this one earlier. So this one will be nice and gentle on the shoulders. Another one that would be easy on the wrist would be down on the forearm. So that's our dolphin variation. And if you're feeling like the wrist, shoulders, everything's feeling really good today, 
our full side plank would just be rolling to the outside of your right foot. And then you could either stagger the insides of the feet or stagger the inside and the outside of the feet, or you could stack the insides of the feet. And then there's another option. I'm not on the yoga mat, let's take it here. And then there's another option to lift the top leg too. So you have a few options on that one. So let's give that a try out. So we'll come into plank for a moment. And then let's lift our left hand up. So we're gonna land in side plank. So this is where we can bring the bottom leg down, lift the top leg up, stack the insides of the feet, maybe stagger the insides of the feet. And you could also be on the forearm. Let's come on back to plank. On exhale, let's lift into a down dog. Take your right leg up to the sky, three limb dog. Right foot takes a float forward. We're here too, let's rise up. Now, as we set up in warrior two, it can take a little time for the body to open, but see if you can get your hips and your shoulders to square off to the left side of the room. Let's bring it into reverse from here. We're gonna float that front hand up and back. Back hand can glide down the back leg. Maybe wrap your arm around your low back. Reach for the other hip crease. Take a half point here. Core engages. Come on through. Lateral angle. And then if you'd like a little bit more, maybe extended lateral angle. Maybe hand drops down for more. And then we'll just try not to collapse into the bottom shoulder. Try to create a little lift here and a little bit of lengthening here. Grounding into the feet, core engages to come on up, relaxing the arms and the front leg and let's work with pyramid stretch. So for pyramid, left foot will take a hop forward, not all the way to the top of the mat, but we're gonna have it maybe a couple feet, maybe a few feet between the feet. Try to have your feet in line with your hips. Toes are gonna point straight forward. And if you have those yoga blocks, you could always bring the blocks to the top of the mat for a little support. Hands are gonna reach up, full breath in. Let's lengthen. We're gonna try to hold the length as we come down. And then we're gonna round and then we can soften here. Now, little micro movements and adjustments. Encourage your left hip forward, right hip draws back a little bit helping you to balance off the hips and balance off the low back. Option to stay here, if you'd like to try for a twist, right hand can reach up, finding a twist. And then as you're twisting, almost create a little sensation like you could stack and open through the shoulders. So we'll feel our shoulders stacking and opening. We'll feel our wrists stacking and opening. If this is feeling okay and you'd like a little bit more challenge, you could try a pose called twisted balancing half moon, revolve balancing half moon. So you bring more weight into your left hand and then you try to lift your left leg up, but you're keeping that twist in the body. Let's try to inhale to the stomach, ribs and chest, and then releasing from the chest ribs and stomach. Let's take a moment to reset. Runner's lunge. Find your way back to plank. High push-up pose. Now as you take plank, let's try for side plank, opposite side. We're going to lift that left hand when you're ready. So you remember all the different ways to modify but yoga is so great, so many options to really make the practice your own. Whichever variation you're in, see if you can lift your top hip up a little higher, lift that top hand a little higher, really get into that nice shoulder and side body stretch. We are gonna release back through the center. Let's begin to take the left leg to the sky and then left foot will float forward. Open up, warrior two. So as we align in warrior two, 
typically the alignment of the seat is if you drew a line from your wrist down to your feet, that would be the right distance. You can always check in with yourself, see if maybe you need to widen your stance, maybe shorten the stance a bit. Reverse, let's take it up and back, peaceful warrior two position. Maybe gliding the hand down the back leg or wrapping it around your low back. Hold engages, come on through. Lateral angle. And extended lateral angle if you'd like to go there. Although this isn't a twist, we do want to create a little twist sensation. So see if you can roll that right shoulder open, left shoulder under. And we're going to rise, ground into the feet. Core engages to come on up. Hands are going to relax, legs will too, and let's come into pyramid. Right foot takes that step forward a bit. So if it felt easier that first time, maybe challenge yourself, maybe a wider stance between the feet. And then if it felt really challenging, maybe see if shortening the stance can give you a better stretch. So with this one, we do want to make sure our back heel is grounded. It's going to feel a little different than those straight leg twists that we did earlier. Let's bring our hands up. Reach from your low back, lengthen, engage your core, hold the length. We're going to come down. We're going to dive and round when we land. And if you would like to give yourself a little bit more stretch, sometimes bringing more weight into your left foot will intensify the stretch. It helps to lift the left hip a little bit more. So maybe breathe into that. Left hand, let's lift it up. We're gonna take a twist here. And then as we're twisting, see if you can take that left hip crease and just draw it back a little bit. See if you can get a little bit more balanced here in your hips. Grounding firmly into your right hand. If you'd like to try it, let's try for that balancing half moon pose, the twist, the revolve variation. And then again, we're going to come back to our inhale and our exhale through our nose. We are going to unwrap this pose to runner's lunge. We'll come out nice and slow with control. Set yourself back to plank. High push-up pose, chaturanga, dandasana. We're going to lower, hug the arms alongside the body. Let the elbows run straight back. Up dog. Let's breathe into our upper back bend. And then we're going to press back to down dog when you're ready. Knees will begin to lower. Sweep your feet to the right or to the left. We're gonna come down into seated. Kick the legs out in front. Flex your feet. Press through the heels and the backs of the knees. Try to lengthen your spine a little more. We call this one Dandasana, Staff's Pose. We're gonna hold the length in the spine. We're gonna dive down and then you can gently round the back body. Coming into a seated forward fold, it's also called Pashimottanasana. And then just finding some softness here. Maybe you do a little scan of the body, noticing where you're holding on to tension. And then as you exhale, just letting that tension go. Letting your body relax and release. To release, let's begin to come on up. And I'd love to take some time to work down on our backs. We're gonna work with a really nice hip stretch, really good for the legs, and especially the IT bands it's called reclining gomukhasana also called reclining cow space. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our left leg and cross it up and over. So just sometimes we do the figure four. So this is gonna be a little different. So we're just gonna cross our legs, imagining maybe where we're sitting at a table. So we have our legs crossed and then aiming for those knees to be in the same line. So we have our left leg on top, right leg underneath. 
Now, we're going to begin to lift those legs up. You might want to reach for your left knee, more stretch, reach for the right knee. If you're feeling flexible, what you'll do is, sometimes people get a little confused on this one, but we're going to keep it nice and easy. Keep your arms along your body, and then just grab onto the foot that's on that side. So it's going to be hand for opposite foot. So right hand for your left foot, and then left hand for your right foot. And you can kind of use that arm strength to pull the legs in a little bit. And if you wanted to, you could rock. Sometimes a little rock can help open up the body a little more. Sometimes it can feel almost like a little massage on the low back. You can also check in, maybe stillness works for you. So maybe doing that, finding that stillness. Let's try to close the eyes or soften the gaze. We'll just practice a little mindfulness here. Becoming aware in your body where you feel the stretch. We all experience each pose very differently. So maybe you're feeling the stretch in the legs, maybe in the hips, maybe in the low back, maybe through those arms. And then also just becoming aware of the stretch that you feel, how intense it is, because it's always very interesting when we do the second side of a, particularly a hip stretch, that it might feel much more intense and much might feel much easier. You might feel like you could stay in it so much longer or vice versa. It's always important to build and nurture that mind-body connection. We are going to unwrap the legs and then we'll take our right leg up and over. And option to reach for your right knee. More stretch, reach for your left knee. Or we're just gonna take our arms along our body and then reach for opposite foot. Maybe use those arms a little bit, use that strength that we build through the practice to draw the legs in a bit more. Maybe rocking, maybe stillness. Maybe become aware now that you have that awareness of the first side. Does it feel easier here? Does it feel more challenging here? Sometimes closing the eyes or softening the gaze is so nice. Just it helps us relax a little bit more. So maybe doing that, see if you can calm your nervous system a bit more. Become aware your mind, our mind creates so much noise, so much thoughts. So just become aware of it. If you have the thought, just let it go. Try to come back to your breath, come back to the present moment. Let's begin to unwrap the legs, reach for the feet. We'll take a happy baby stretch. Flex the feet, reach through the heels. We'll do a little rock to the right, a little rock to the left. Knees can come back through to center. Let's take the feet to the edges of the mat. Knees are bent, and then just a gentle rock of the knees to the right, and then off to the left. As you make your way back to the center of the mat, let's relax. We'll find our way into Shavasana. We'll come into our resting, our relaxation pose. So feel free to relax the legs, relax the arms. You could also bend your knees and plant your feet. Sometimes feet nice and wide out and then drop the knees in. And then just giving yourself this time and stillness and silence to 
integrate the benefits of the practice today into your mind, into your body. Take a moment to just gently become aware of how you feel. Feel your mind relaxed, calm, at ease. Feel your body aligned and balanced. Tension that you came to class with, feeling how that has released with yoga, with meditation. Rolling onto your side, rolling to the right or to the left. Maybe find a pillow with the lower arm, taking that time to pause. Giving yourself an opportunity to take a nice, deep, full breath in and a nice, deep, full breath out. Letting the core engage, we'll bring ourselves up to seated. As you come into seated, let's take three shoulder rolls here. Draw your shoulders to the ears, relax them down. Full breath in, shoulders up, back and down. And one more time, we're gonna inhale and exhale. Let's take our hands to the heart in prayer. Maybe close eyes or soften the gaze. Thanking yourself for practicing yoga today for doing something so good for your mind and your body. The light within me honors the light within you. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. It's wonderful to be here with you all. I hope that you enjoyed this spring-inspired practice. I really loved all of those twists. I feel all wrung out from the winter, which feels really great. So I hope that you experience those benefits as well. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. So see you soon. Take care.